Welcome to the coffee shop, everybody. This is your host and barista, Eric. This podcast is turning into a bit of a uh, monster. Uh, It's designed to teach you the technical analysis that you should know uh, so you can stay out of false trades in your crypto endeavors. It's a platform where I get to release my edits on popular indicators, and I'll show you how to use them like in today's video. And of course, from time to time, I will call out really bad strategies because I don't want you guys and gals to have bad information. So feel free to share this content wherever you choose. And of course, do not fall for scams. I will not approach you online asking for crypto assets or lending of any type of financial support. But bear in mind, that doesn't mean I don't enjoy talking with you guys. So if you do see a message from me, it's probably something like, hey, how you doing? I want to get close to you, right? And, you know, just talk to you a little bit about what type of indicators you use and what your trading styles are. That's it. Now, so let's get to it. It's been a while since I released the CSC Harsey. And I think it's time I do a quick video on an entry and on not an entry and exit on a how to go long and how to go short using this indicator. Uh, And as you know, with other people online, they will tell you, hey, you buy here and you watch the chart so you can exit or you sell here and you watch the chart so you can exit. I will never do that. I will never assume that you're going to sit there and stare at your chart for hours and hours waiting for your trade to get into a position where you need to end. I promise you that I will tell you exactly how and why you need to set your trade, your risk reward for a one to 1.5 or one to two or one to three or one to whatever, right? I will tell you how far to set it. This way you can walk away from your trade, not feel like FOMO and just go live your life. So this has been requested by dozens of you weekly and I have seen all of the videos online on the improper way to use the old version of the indicator. Since the new indicator is out and it works basically on beast mode, I want you guys to be using it to its fullest potential. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the coffee shop crypto Harsey uh, based off of using the VWAP as the RSI moving average. Okay, sounds like a lot, right? But really, uh, this has been, uh, the CSE Harsey has an RSI built into it and the RSI also has an RSI moving average. Uh, With that, you can choose which type of moving average that you wanna use. And as you can see on my screen, uh, under the inputs tab, you'll see that you get to choose eight different types of moving averages that are tied to your RSI. Okay, now, so I'm gonna delete mine from the screen, okay? And uh, I wanna go from start to finish with you guys, and I'm gonna show you how to get into a long position and how to get into a short position, okay? I don't wanna spend too much time on setting support and resistance levels. That's why I already have mine set. If you wanna see how to set support and resistance levels, go ahead, look at my profile, and find the video on the most recent one on setting support and resistance levels using the CSC Harsey or the Heiken Ashialco. Now, Uh, Let's get into it. Go to trading view, get right in there, go to your indicators and look for in the community scripts, look for coffee shop, right? Look for coffee shop. And you're going to see under community scripts, coffee shop, crypto, Harsey 2022. There is only one. If you type in coffee shop, crypto, there is only one. I'm the only one. Yay. Now, Add this to your chart, make it your favorite. It should always be your favorite. It should always be on your chart, right? And right about this point, I implore you, go right to the tab over here, right? A little private chat right there and send me a quick little message to say, hey, I just added it to my chart. This looks pretty cool. Let's get onto the video. Now, um, so basically with the default settings, you're pretty much ready to go. What I want you to do is I want you to go into the settings wheel under the inputs tab, I want you to just make sure that the moving average type at the bottom, moving average type is set for VWAP. That's it. And hit save. Uh, I'm sorry, hit save, hit okay. What you should also do is set it as your default for now because I will be releasing other videos on how to use the other moving averages uh, for your entries and exits. Now, so hit okay. The settings, the default settings work perfectly for this. Now, uh, let me just do a quick info for you when you're setting your support and resistance levels pick a time frame on your chart that's at least 
one or two time frames above what you usually use. So I use a one hour, which means I'm going to the four hour and I'm setting my support and resistance. Then I come back down to my area and I look at the additional support and resistance levels that are showing up on the chart and I add those in just a little bit. You don't want too many, you just want a few. Now, I understand that price right now is way, 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 way over here, right? But I want to show you a rally up and a rally down so you can see how you get in and out of those trades, okay? Now, uh, I wanna show you an example instead of waiting for one to happen on the screen. So I'm just picking one in the past which isn't too far to go. Now, let's get into this. Um, as you do with any chart, go and set your support and resistance level. You know how I do mine. Um, lucky for you, the indicator already tells you additional support right here and additional resistance right there, levels that you can set in your charts. You can also use these. There's another video that I created where you can use these with trend lines and actually see your trend. For example, here's a resistance, right? You get resistance right here. Just want you to see it. Resistance right there. And then you get a support right there, right? Here's support, okay, right here, right there. You can draw a line straight out. And you can use that line as your, um, what do you call it? You can use that line as your, 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 mean, your mean line, your middle line for your trend. You can see that price comes up, barely breaks out, comes down and keeps hitting it, hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. Your 50 period, really, really follows that line until it finally breaks away. And then you need a new trend line, which you get. So you add support here at this one, but then all of a sudden there's a new support one down here. So connect those two, delete the first one. Now, that's a whole other video. Support and resistance lines and trends. It's in my, it's a video in my profile. Now, let's get into this. Uh, I want to tell you something briefly about the stochastic, okay? I'll get into this uh, on a whole of the video, but I need to tell you something based on this so you're not getting the wrong idea. On this, all I have is the stochastic, my candles, my support and resistance, and my RSI plus the moving average turned on. S candles, RSI, support and resistance, and stochastic. That's it, you need those things. Um, the stochastic works like this. When you are green, okay, when it's green and moving upward, nothing happens to price until the RSI is above the 50. When you are red and in a downtrend, it doesn't matter where the stochastic is. It doesn't matter if it's up here, if it's over here, if it's down, it doesn't matter. The RSI has to be either above or below the 50. And your Heiken Ashi candles have to be either red or green. So. If your high Ashi candles are red and so is your stochastic, expect to move to the downside when your RSI crosses below 50. If your stochastic is green, like I said, it doesn't matter that it's down here. It doesn't matter. If your stochastic is green and your candles are green, expect to move to the upside if your RSI crosses above the 50. If it never makes it above the 50, then you do not look for a long position. This really tells you how to scalp and swing, and it tells you the direction of the move very quickly, all right? What it's also doing is it's telling you when you have lost momentum. So like if your RSI is below the 50, but your stochastic is moving up, what it's telling you is that you are losing pressure to the downside because your RSI is down here, but the stochastic is green, and it's supposed to be pushing down you have lost pressure to the downside. And you can see that clearly here. Stochastic is moving up. The RSI here is most likely below the 50. So you have lost pressure to the downside and it's moving down very slowly. So let me put on the other indications. I just wanted you to understand that. You can see stochastic is moving up, right? Candles are green, they're way up here. And you get a little push up, but where is the RSI and the moving average, right? They are, they're above the 50. So you get this little bump right here. You're still in an uptrend. This is an uptrend. So you're up, but then they turn red right here. You've lost movement to the upside. So you're stuck in a range. Now, that's a lot to know about the stochastic and we'll get into a TNA on that one on a later date. So it's really important that you set your support and resistance levels because otherwise this is not gonna work for you. Let's get into it and let me try and cover this in just like five minutes. Here is how you enter into a short position, okay? 
uh, luckily the Heiken Ashi algo is coming out, so it's going to automatically tell you to get into a short position here or a short position here or a short position here. It's going to tell you where to do it. But in the meantime, until I get that set up, uh, I want you to be able to see this on your own so that you can see when you should be getting out. Now, the rules for getting into a short position are like this. The stochastic must be in a downtrend. It must be red. doesn't matter where it is. It has to be red and in a downtrend. Okay. The RSI must be below the moving average. So stochastic is red. RSI is below the moving average, right? Uh, and the RSI must be below 50. It's better when both are below 50. So like this would be key right here, but it the moving average crosses a 50 right there. It's actually 49.69. So this is a good entry right here. Now, um, so basically you have pushed the downside and everything is already on the downside. Your high Kineshi candles should be red. You with me? Red, red candles, everything else below the 50. Got it? Stochastic red, candles red, everything else below the 50. That is an entry for a short. Now, the most optimal move is when the candle opens above the 60, okay? When it opens above the 60 and closes below the 60, that would be up here. Um, I don't want to go looking for one right now. There is one right here. It opens above the 60, closes below the 60, and then all of a sudden stochastic moves down. That would be moved to the downside. But here we're working with the 50 level since it happens more commonly. An alternate to rule six is if your candle opens above the 50 and above the moving average, and it closes below both the 50 and the moving average. So you can see here, your candle opens above the 50, right? Let me get right. Candle opens above the 50. You can see it opens here. It crosses the 50 and the moving average, and it closes below both. This is an optimal move, okay, because this is price building to the downside. This is basically a scalp when it's up here. This is a move to the downside. Now, obviously, for the rules for getting into a long position, it would be just the opposite. I want to show you what this looks like, okay? This is a short. I would see this. I would see this, not using any kind of alerts or anything. I would see this, and I'd be able to know how much further is the move going to go. It's not enough to see the move and that it happened. You want to know, do you still have time to get in on that move, right? So this move happens here. Everything registers at the close of the candle. So you set your short here. You set your swing high here. I'm going to set it at the 100 because like I said, I used the 100 and the 50 exponential moving averages. You can add those to your chart. Now, how far do you go? Where is the end of your move? Well, with something like this, you can commonly go 1 to 1.5 or 1 to 2. But that's what all these other videos tell you. Go 1 to 1.5 or go 1 to 2. My question is, why? Where do they get that number from? I want an actual number. So I realized there is an RSI formula. I'll make another video for this. As you can see, the RSI here at the close, if you look at this yellow number, the RSI here at the close is 42.09, right? So 50 minus 42.09, oops, 42.09, 7.91, okay? Just trust me on what I'm doing here, plus 50. So this move is a 1 to 2.79. I drop this number. I move the decimal point over. 50 is 1 to 2, 1 to 2.79 which means 1 to 2.79, okay? Now, obviously, I have no idea where price is going. This, you know, it's not like a setup or anything. 1 to 2.79. Of all things, these other videos tell you 1 to 2, 1 to 1 1.5, or whatever. I'm picking 1 to 2.79 as my go-to, and it catches all the way through this range. Nothing comes through your stop loss. There must be another push to the downside because the moving averages start curving down. There must be another entry somewhere around here, right? And actually, here it is. It's right here. This is another push to the downside. You see that the Heiken Ashi candle opens above the 40, closes below the 40, 
it's opened above the moving average and closes below the moving average. Anytime a candle opens above an average and closes below the average means this is the optimal price. That is the optimal price. And right here, it also changes over to a down, uh, your stochastic also changes to a downtrend. So this would have been the next early entry. This move got you 12%, 12 12.86%. You would have been able to set this and walk away. And you would have just stayed out of the market for one day and 22 hours and then waited. And you would not have lost at all. You would not have lost. Nothing came close. An entire two days would go by and you would gain 12% on this move, right? Where, yeah, you would gain 12, more than almost 13% on this move. That's a move to the downside. Now, you got the information on how to get the move to the short. Let me show you the long right here, okay? <clears throat> Here's a long position that I found in the history, uh, and it's just the opposite, right? You're gonna you're gonna wait for a, a cross of the 50 and the moving average, right, of your high Kanashi candle, and unfortunately, that doesn't happen here. That does happen here, All right? Does that happen right here? Nope, it doesn't happen here. Here it is. It happens here. So you can see that the Heiken Ashi candle crosses above the 50 and above the moving average and your RSI uh, is above both, right? But your stochastic is still red. So this means this is kind of good because it's starting to curve. You are losing momentum to the downside. I would have waited for the candle to close above the 60, which is what ended up happening here. Basically what happens using a VWAP as your RSI moving average, it's a moving 50 line or a moving zero line, okay? Your, um, let me take this one off, I don't like it. Your zero line or your entry line is the moving average and it's always the moving average, but you have to start below it and cross above it. So this one is no good. You see how it starts below, but it ends above but it also crosses the 50. So this is great actually. Uh, this one, very little of the candle crosses above the moving average. A majority, a, I'm sorry, not a majority, but majority of the candle closes above the 50 and it closes above the um, moving average. Your stochastic is green, but I'm gonna accept these anyway, okay? This is a long position. So I would enter the close of this candle I go for my swing low. I'll set it at that little pivot down there. And my RSI formula says 59. That is a 1 to 3.0. I'm going to go 1 to 3.0 on this move. 1 to 3.0. And I have no idea where this is going. 1 to 3.0. 3.0. There. Okay. Now, obviously, it looks like I missed everything, right? I mean, it really looks like I've gotten way over this range. I went way over my support level. But what's happening here? This had a lot of volume to it, enough to stop this move to the downside because price was below the average, closed above the average. Okay. And what happens to the price? Look at that. Again, a super long trade that you really, really catch the whole thing. And right at this level, you can see that your RSI does what? Your RSI hits that alleged oversold or overbought area. Why would you want to be in here? This move got you all the pips, everything, and then it got you out right at the end of it. This is a 16.81% move. So call it however you want. This always works. I use the RSI formula. It works. Now you can always do a one to two to cover yourselves if you like to, all right? That would just cover you. Now, again, just a real quick one. Open below the moving average, close above the moving average. Your Heiken Ashi has to be green. Your stochastic has to be green. Or you have to be crossing the 50 and the moving average. Okay? You can do it crossing the 60 and the moving average. You have to be crossing the moving average. And that's the only way it works. All right. Read the info below. There's a step-by-step -step right there on how to do it. And I'll catch you in the next one. Later, peeps.